hey mom it's your son i'm um well you know this little town right here everybody definitely knows who i am now it's pretty insane i turn on my camera a thousand people start listening so the way i see it if that's the case i'm gonna teach them about the supreme court and how the supreme court has worked against us for our rights so many people say the supreme court said and i just they don't know the supreme court has worked against the people since its inception in 1789 so today i'm gonna teach them mom i'm gonna teach them about terry versus ohio people put in my comment section end qualified immunity qualified immunity doesn't let a cop run up to you and say i'm suspicious of you grab you and detain you by putting you in torture cuffs so today i'm just gonna teach wish me luck i love you mom i'll talk to you soon bye <laughs> Watch your six. These guys will try to charge you for walking in the street here. You know, that's how far it's gone, is it's gone so far that if you step on a street in America, they'll charge you with a crime. And then once, once they charge you with a crime, they can arrest you. And so people will say, oh, you can't be arrested for that. The 2001 case of Atwater versus City of Lago Vista. You guys can look that case up. I implore you all to know the 2001 case of Atwater versus City of Lago Vista. When her case goes to the Superior Court, up to the Appellate Court, and then it, 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 it's, it's filed for certiorari, meaning that they want the Supreme Court to hear it. When it gets to the Supreme Court, surely the nine appointed justices are gonna see in 2001 that Gail Atwater is arrested for not wearing a seatbelt, and they're gonna strike that down. No, no, no. The Supreme Court justices then uphold Gail Atwater's conviction, and then her conviction applies to all of us, that cops can arrest you, and this is David Souder's holding, that he writes the holding in Atwater versus City of Lago Vista, and what it says is that if you violate the law in front of a police officer, even an infraction of the law, spitting on the sidewalk, littering, crossing in the street, not wearing your seatbelt, even an infraction of the law, that the cop can arrest you, kidnap you, take you to a dungeon, and it is not a violation of your Fourth Amendment right to be secure in your person. That's the Supreme Court we have. So if you haven't ever heard of the 2001 case of Atwater versus City of Lago Vista, then you might not know that flicking that cigarette butt on the ground is arrestable. You might not know that spitting on the sidewalk is arrestable. That if the cop decides that you're using obscene language, not vulgar language, there's a difference in the court cases, then he can arrest you. If, if you cross the street outside of the crosswalk and the cop wants to arrest you, he can arrest you. If, if Rick and I have a back and forth and Rick for one second believes that I'm gonna start violence, the cop can say he arrested me to stop violence. And then the cop, if he arrests you unjustly, he has immunity which it, qualified immunity is not our biggest problem. It is Tenney versus Brandoff, which gives judges and legislators immunity, and it's Terry versus Ohio. Those are our biggest problems. Qualified immunity is down the line. You have Graham versus Connor in front of qualified immunity. Let's use Terry versus Ohio. Terry versus Ohio creates the mantra that cops can violate your rights literally. That's the holding. They even say during the Terry v. Ohio oral arguments that it certainly could be an assault, but maybe not an arrest. That's what they say. It does not arrest him to ask him a question. And you're saying, I imagine you're saying also, it doesn't necessarily arrest him to touch him. It does not arrest him to touch him. It might be an assault, but not an arrest. It might be an assault. Under meaning. And it does not interfere with his freedom in a significant way. He hadn't taken him into custody, you're saying. That is correct, you're under an arrest. During the hearing, you can listen to it on my channel. So what happens is a policy is created called judicial activism at the Supreme Court level. Now, once that policy is created, what the cop shops around America do 
is they then create policy around a policy. It's not legislated by the legislators and then vote and then signed into to law by the executive of your state or by the executive of the country. That's not how it's working. The courts, the Supreme Court specifically creates a policy and then the police departments, they decide how they're going to implement the policy. So when you have officer safety, the cops can lightly pat you down. And this is the Terry rules, according to Cuyahoga County Judge Bernard Friedman. He's the one uh, who writes. He's the trial court judge for John Terry. He actually writes the Terry holdings, which is just preposterous. And by the way, I, <clears throat> I have researched Judge Bernard Friedman and I get to a place where he's, he, he's, he's connected to some racist people, but I can't find a direct connection to Judge Bernard Freeman of Cuyahoga County, Ohio, and him being a racist because Terry versus Ohio is a racist holding that's now applied to all of us. What Terry specifically does is it creates the policy of detainment. Specifically, that's what it does. During the Terry v. Ohio oral arguments, you can hear the judges with the lawyer, Reuben Payne, Reuben Payne for the state. He's talking back and forth with the judges. And what Terry does is it creates this magical little space called detainment. Because you can hear Hugo Black. He wants to figure out a way to punish people if you don't answer questions. He can arrest him if he chooses. He can arrest him. But Thorgy doesn't choose to arrest him. Thorgy wants to do something short of arrest him. And I don't think he has that right. Then the man can go on all, not answer questions, because the officer doesn't have at that time sufficient amount of evidence to make the case of probable cause of guilt of committing the crime. So why would a Supreme Court justice say a man can just go on off and not answer questions? Because up before 1964, black people didn't have the same civil rights, civil liberties that you and I have they didn't get them. You weren't allowed to have those rights. So when you hear Judge Hugo Black in 1967 during the oral arguments of Terry saying to the representative for the state, Reuben Payne, saying, well, what if he wants to do something less than arrest him and the man could just go on off without answering any questions? Hugo Black, who was a lifetime member of the KKK, he's thinking about black people don't have rights. So now the police create a policy around detainment. It used to be, according to the Terry rules, a light pat down on the front of your body to see if you have any weapons that could hurt the cop. What that has turned into since 1968 is a POW style of arrest upon suspicion of you. It's turned into this. Get on your knees, look away from me, crawl forward, and if you don't, we'll kill you. That's what Terry v. Ohio has become because Terry v. Ohio allows police to detain you, to stop him where he is. I have the right, and this is not arrested according to the Supreme Court, it's arrested, it's arrested. And so when I have the right to detain you and the Supreme Court has created this magical space where you can be detained, then the police stations create Terry policies of what detainment means. So Atwater versus City of Lago Vista has to go, way ahead of qualified immunity. The interaction starts when the cop can arrest you for any infraction. So it's not number one, Terry versus Ohio's number one, but number two, three, or four is Atwater versus City of Lago Vista. Number two, three, or four is Graham versus Connor. Graham versus Connor, the 1989 holding, is based on the, the, the reasonable officer on the scene will determine the appropriate amount of force to use on you. So, and the actual holding says, that the reasonable officer on the scene. How can you be reasonable when you are the subject of the stop? When I just got in Fouch's face, he now becomes the subject of the interaction. He's not the objective third party. So Graham versus Connor is false on its face. It's fake. So, but that with Terry versus Ohio, the, the, the policy of officer safety coming above your life, your liberty and your rights, you lose all your rights to be free in your person because of the combination of Terry versus Ohio and Graham versus Connor. As a matter of fact, in the Terry era documentary, the number one video on my page, when you open it up, it says Graham plus Terry equals death because they can walk up to you and investigate you 
because they have the right to investigate you based on their suspicion, which is preposterous. And then in the name of officer safety, Graham versus Connor, once they start to investigate you, the cop on the scene will determine the appropriate amount of force to use on you. And then the policy of officer safety for Terry is to put you in torture cuffs immediately because they're scared. That's why you keep hearing cops are scared because of the 1989 holding of Graham versus Connor. And this goes back to Mark Wasserman and his, his uh, shut the fuck up. That's what he actually trademarked it. So I want to give all the credit to Mark Wasserman for that. But you need to shut the fuck up when you talk to cops. Shut up. Show them the pamphlet. Show them the trifold. If Tim and Sarah had not spoken, they would not be in the position they're in today. The cops literally enjoyed listening to Sarah cry. They enjoyed listening to her cry. So I want to make sure everybody has it. Uh, but I recommend you get the indestructible paper and you order that off of my website. And that does a few things. That protects your rights and also supports what we're doing here because we don't stop. We don't stop. We don't stop. You stole poor people's wallet. You stole 130 bucks, McKnight. Oh, Pam, is that Blankenship right there? Do I get the Blankenship finally? Is it true your dad's a drug dealer? Is that true? Is your dad a drug dealer? Is it true? Yes or no?